Do you love to drink tea in the winter time? I know I do. I actually drink it all year round, whether hot or cold, and I love using the herbs that I have from my garden or even playing with fun flavors like dried fruit and um, different infused honeys. So today I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to do that in a very simple way. Okay, so the first thing I start with is either a fresh herb or a properly dried herb from my garden. Um, so an example of a fresh herb is me taking some of the cinnamon basil and just infusing it in water. I love doing this. It's still considered a tea, even though it's just an infused water. Very simple, but a great way to dress up um, for any meal too, especially when you have company coming over. So that's a really easy, no tools required way to make some iced tea. Some of these jars I have contain herbs from my garden or that I foraged. This is nettles and this is dried raspberry leaves. Um, I'm in, I'm nine months pregnant now and so these are great teas for this time as we're preparing for baby to come forward and just recovery after pregnancy. Um, these herbs work wonderfully and how I would use these is simply by taking an infuser whether hot or cold. So what I have here is um, this is a teapot made for hot brew and this is a cold brew carafe. So I can add, if I wanted to make raspberry leaf tea, I can simply take some out, fill my infuser about halfway and that will strain out so you don't have leaves in the tea. And then I just put this water, took it off the stove so it's nice and warm, and I'm gonna pour it over top. You can see it's already starting to brew, and it smells wonderful. And herbal teas you usually let steep for three to five minutes. The stronger, the better. In Chinese medicine, they actually say to steep it all day long in lukewarm water because it's best absorbed into your bloodstream at a room temperature with a slow infusion. But of course, I really do enjoy a nice warm cup of tea. So I don't think that you sacrifice a ton doing it this way in a more traditional English style. So there it is, the raspberry leaf. And then for the cold tea, so this is made for a cold brew coffee but it works great for tea as well. Do my nettles in this one. And I'm again, it's got a very similar infuser to the hot teapot. Um, and you can find these on Amazon. We'll put the link below. And I'm gonna fill this about halfway, a little bit more. So I filled this about halfway with my dried nettles that I just foraged from outside. And I'm gonna pour cold water over the top. Now this process does take about 12 hours. So I typically do this at night before I go to bed and steep it all night long and in the morning I have nice iced tea to enjoy. And I like to add collagen to this or um, so a little bit of honey and it just makes for a very pleasant morning beverage, especially if you're not drinking coffee. Now, if you want to mix and match and make a tea blend like I have here, this is just a mix of some dried herbs and flowers. So it's very beautiful, especially for company to come over. Um, and you can really play with flavors. So in here I have some um, calendula and I have uh, chamomile, rose petals, and some mint. And so it's a really nice refreshing bedtime, just before bedtime tea, um, especially the chamomile in there really makes me very sleepy. Uh, and, and a great way to um, brew this type of tea, especially when you wanna highlight how pretty it is, is to put it in a mug like this. And then we're gonna pour the hot water in. And then I'm going to cover it with um, this lid. And a lot of different ceramic artists 
make these. You can also use like a mason jar lid if you don't have something as fancy as that. But the reason we cover it is because when herbal tea is steeping, um, the essential oils are released if it's too hot and you don't wanna lose those oils. Um, so if you cover it, it forces them to go back down until after the tea is fully steeped, about three to five minutes. And then when it's done, you have those beautiful petals to look at. And another fun thing is if you have guests over that are not used to drinking loose leaf tea, or if you just don't feel like picking the leaves out of your teeth, we have these diffuser straws. They're actually available at our farm store because we, we do sell some of our tea blends there. And the straws have a um, like holes in the bottom at, that function as a filter. They're completely reusable and um, you can just stick it in the bottom of your teacup and it strains all the leaves. So uh, it works great for not getting leaves and things in, your, in the back of your throat. One thing I want to encourage you to do when you're mixing and matching teas is to get creative and uh, think outside the box. So not only do I like to use just straight herbs, but when I'm making my blends, when we uh, have apples and we're making applesauce, we'll peel them, and a byproduct is obviously the peels that we dehydrate. So adding some apple peels into your tea blend makes it a little bit sweeter. Some people will add stevia at this point as well if they're going for more of a sweeter tea. And so you add some fruit. Um, orange peels are wonderful. This is some fresh or er, dried mint from the garden. And cinnamon sticks that are ground work amazing. And then when you come up with your blend and you're happy with it, store it in a jar like this to keep it fresh. And you can just shake it up. These make great Christmas presents because they're so vibrant with color and really beautiful. And you can even pair it with a small jar of honey and a teaspoon. And it's just like a fun, quick gift from the heart. Um, so that's another thing I enjoy. And also playing with the types of honey that you use. In our farm store, we have our spring honey, which is the more traditional yellow honey that you might be used to. And then this is the deep and rich fall honey that I love. It's more molasses in color, and it definitely has a more robust um, flavor to it when you're infusing um, your fresh teas. So pairing um, an, a different type of honey is also really fun. And the reason this honey is so dark is because of the Japanese knotwood that's native to our area. So it's also not something that you can find anywhere outside of, of the Northeast um, where the Japanese knotwood grows. So if you found this helpful and you enjoyed um, some of our content, feel free to like and subscribe us on YouTube. And also we're on Instagram and Facebook. And please reach out with questions. Let us know what you'd like to hear more about. And uh, if, you have, if you have any questions about me going deeper on a certain subject material, uh, we love to hear from you. And of course, we always want you to visit our farm store uh, located in Alfred, New York.